So yeah, according to the US Supreme Court, tomatoes are legally vegetables. Kind of. But to know why they made this ruling, we have to go back to 19th century New York. In 1839, John Nix founded the John Nix & Co. Fruit Commission in New York City. The company eventually became one of the largest produce sellers in the city at the time, and it was one of the first companies to ship fruit from Virginia, Florida, and Bermuda to New York. In 1883, U.S. President Chester A. Arthur signed the Tariff Act of March 3, 1883, which put a tax on imported vegetables, but not fruit. There was a lot of political discussion at the time on how tariffs or import taxes should be reduced or increased. The Tariff Act of 1883 lowered tariffs on certain items while others were raised. Overall, tariff rates were reduced by an average of 1.47% and most taxes remained around 35-40%. to 40%. A few years later, John Nix was charged for importing tomatoes from the West Indies to New York. After paying this tax to Hedden, collector of customs of the Port of New York, John Nix and co filed a suit against Hedden to recover this money. Nix believed that he shouldn't have to pay the tax on vegetables as, botanically, tomatoes are fruit. Fruit is defined as any seed-bearing structure formed from a flowering plant's ovary after flowering. Hedden refused to acknowledge that tomatoes are fruit and insisted that the company pay the 10% import tax on vegetables. So the Nixes sued him to recover their payment. The company's efforts to be reimbursed led to a six-year legal battle, starting in the Circuit Court of the United States for the Southern District of New York that eventually went all the way up to the Supreme Court. After this case was brought to the Supreme Court on April 24, 1892, they made their ruling on May 10, 1893. According to Justice Gray, quote, the single question in this case is whether tomatoes, considered as provisions, are to be classed as vegetables or as fruit within the meaning of the Tariff Act of 1883, end quote. It is important to note that the U.S. Supreme Court does not recognize tomatoes as vegetables. Like all legal matters, it's a bit more complicated. As you know, they agreed with the defendant, Hedden, and so the recognition of tomatoes as vegetables only applies to the Tariff Act of 1883. So I guess you could still technically say that the Supreme Court believes that tomatoes should be recognized as vegetables, it's just that you won't be telling the whole truth. At the trial, the plaintiffs or the Nix's counsel read definitions of the word fruit and vegetables from the Webster's Dictionary, Worcester's Dictionary, and the Imperial Dictionary. They also brought two witnesses who had been in the business of selling fruit and vegetables for 30 years, and asked them, after hearing these definitions, to say whether these words had, quote, any special meaning in trade or commerce different from those read, end quote. Both witnesses basically said that the terms fruit and vegetables had no special meaning in trade or commerce in the U.S., different from the dictionary definitions during the time of the trial when the Tariff Act was signed and before that. Furthermore, one witness says that, quote, I understand that the term fruit is applied in trade only to such plants or parts of plants as contain the seeds. There are more vegetables than those in the enumeration given in Webster's Dictionary under the term vegetable as cabbage, cauliflower, turnips, potatoes, peas, beans, and the like, end quote. The plaintiffs' counsel then read the definitions of the word tomato from the same dictionaries. To counter this, the, the defendant or Hedden's counsel read from Webster's dictionary the definitions of words like pea, eggplant, cucumber, squash, and pepper. To counter this, the plaintiffs read the definition of things like potato and cauliflower in the Webster's and Worcester's dictionary. The only pr evidence provided by the parties was reading some dictionaries and asking two businessmen some questions. Despite this, the court believes that dictionaries are not admitted as evidence. They only serve as aids to the memory and understanding of the court. So the only useful evidence in this case, if you can call it that, was the witness testimonies. It was a witness testimonies that proved that neither vegetables nor fruit have any special meaning in trade or commerce, different from that in dictionaries, and that they had the same meaning when the Tariff Act was enacted. Justice Gray, when explaining his decision of the court, also said that the dictionary's definition have, quote, no tendency to show that tomatoes are fruit as distinguished from vegetables in common speech or within the meaning of the tariff act, end quote. He also acknowledged that, quote, botanically speaking, tomatoes are the fruit of a vine, just as are cucumbers, squashes, beans, and peas. But in the common language of the people, whether sellers or consumers of provisions, all of these are vegetables, which are grown in kitchen gardens and which, whether eaten, cooked, or raw, are like potatoes, carrots, parsnips, turnips, beets, cauliflower, cabbage, celery, and lettuce, usually served at dinner in, with or after the soup, fish, or meats, which constitute the principal part of the repast a meal, and not like foods generally as desserts." End quote. Everyone on the Supreme Court agreed that tomatoes are vegetables and not fruit within the meaning of the Tariff Act of March 3, 1883, Chapter 121. 
When explaining his decision, Justice Gray cited other Supreme Court cases, Brown v. Piper and Jones v. U.S., which made their decisions based on the notion that if words have acquired no special meaning in trade or commerce, the ordinary meaning must be used by the court. As tomatoes are largely consumed as if they were vegetables, the Supreme Court ruled that, under U.S. customs regulations, tomatoes should be classified as vegetables and not fruit. This unanimous decision concluded that the Tariff Act of 1883 should apply the common meaning of the words fruit and vegetables instead of their botanical definitions. Somewhat recently, in 2005, lobbyists wanted the tomato to become the official state vegetable of New Jersey. The proposal was eventually approved as Nix v. Hedden was cited to prove that tomatoes can and or should be recognized as vegetables. The South Arkansas's vine-ripe pink tomato has also been both Arkansas's state fruit and vegetable since 1987. Ironically, in 1981, there was a push to formally recognize ketchup as a vegetable. During this time, the U.S. government wanted to cut school lunch costs while still providing nutritious meals with milk, meat, bread, and two servings of vegetables. So the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, wanted to consider ketchup as a vegetable to meet the two servings of vegetable requirement. This was the ketchup as a vegetable controversy, and the backlash that ensued quickly killed the USDA's proposal. And that is why the US Supreme Court concluded that tomatoes are vegetables and not fruit within the meaning of the Tariff Act of 1883. While some, like the USDA, wanted to recognize ketchup as vegetables, and others, like botanists, recognized tomatoes as fruit, all that matters is that no matter what you believe tomatoes are, you will always be technically correct. Kind of. And that's the end of the video. I usually prefer to talk about like Asia and stuff, but there wasn't many videos on this on YouTube, so I decided to do it anyway. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you all so much for watching.